Hi everybody. Remember in the last video we looked at the new relativities, as many as you want, as many as the universe can make. We have general relativity, special relativity, put them together you get mathematical relativity, but now we're just going to look at everything as something that's relative to something else. The speed of light is just relative to the medium in which it's moving. We're going to look at numbers relative to other numbers. It solves a lot of problems. And what we did, we built the universe, we started over here and split it into two halves and made everything this way and then we went to the smallest components and built it back up again. And what we saw, there's a relationship between zero, plus one, minus one. A relative relationship. And then the relationship between numbers and the first number is two. The second number is three. I must have two before I get anything in the universe. I can't just have matter energy by itself. I've got to have somewhere for, for it to be. That's why one is not a number. You can't have one of anything popping into existence in the universe. It must have two components that can come out of zero relative to zero plus one and minus one equal zero. It's the same thing. One just tells you what you've got. And then when I use the numbers two and three, I can build all the other numbers. When I get to three components, I get the next unit of one. Three quarks make the one proton. Three particles, the proton, the neutron, the electron, make one atom. You see how it works? So, this, the biggest split in the universe, the first split when we separate matter, energy, space, time, gravity separates from the atomic forces. That here is half and half. One must be plus, one must be minus. So I've got a relationship to minus one, plus one, zero. Down here at the bottom, I've got relationships plus one, minus one, zero. Even things like the forces, the W boson plus W minus W, the Z boson, which is neutral. The gluons, red, blue, green. The quarks, I, get, I separate the proton into two, up and down, but I must have three, red, blue, and yellow. And now the leptons plus the electron is plus one compared to the neutrino weak nuclear force, they both behave relative to the weak nuclear force, so they're both plus one to that, just like the strong force, the proton and the neutron are both plus one relative to the strong force, so I get the middle of atoms just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but I don't want the atom to do the same thing, so I need plus and minus so it cancels itself out, that will have the whole of chemistry which is built upon a tiny bit of imbalance. So the photon, that's going to be now a lepton, it's part of a, a trilogy. So the trilogy two and three, I get the next one. Very, very easy for the children to understand this, but let's have a look at some of the mathematics. Now, if we're working with one as not a number anymore, two and three are the first numbers, we get to the number six. I can make five, I can add two and three, but I can also get to the number six. Now, six is one of those really special numbers in the universe. It's the first perfect number. But this here, this is a hexagon. And it's the only one in the universe, it's completely unique. It's a way of arranging numbers from one to 19, relative to other numbers. One can be, just, it's the unit, it's the unit of numbers, but it's not a number. Whichever way you add up the rows and columns of here, it makes the number 38. And it's completely unique in the universe. It's just, it just sits by itself. But the relationship between the weakest force in the universe, gravity, and the strong nuclear force which binds together the middle of atoms is 10 to the 38. 1, 0, 38. Once you start to work relative like, relatively like this, it's much easier for the children. They can make sense of it all. It's not all a mystery. Things like infinity just becomes relative. Infinity just means you can always make another one. Until you make one, it doesn't exist. But you can see if I stop numbers here, relative 
to the even numbers, the set of whole numbers is going to be twice as big. So it's relative, and I can say it's either a group or it's a set. So I'll get something like that, relative to scale. It's either individual stars and solar systems, or it's one galaxy. And the children can understand that, they're both answers are correct. So I get the situation, I get more than one correct answer. And what you'll find, you can add plus one and minus one in brackets, so that they equal zero. Then you can add them so that they also equal half. You can add them so that they also equal one or two which is just what you want to find. So now if you go onto YouTube and look at the number file, you find all the explanations for that. But now we're just going to relate mathematics to everything in the real world around us. And it's very, very easy. So I use a diagram like this. I just separate energy and matter, plus one, minus one. Remember, it's not the value. That's one minus one of the unit of C squared, but that's all right, I can say that now. So I get matter plus one, the energy is minus one. I separate the matter again into protons and electrons. And I separate those again into neutrons and protons, but now I've got plus one plus one. The nucleus just gets bigger and bigger. But minus one, the electron, has its partner for the weak nuclear force, the neutrino, and they'll both be plus one relative to the weak nuclear force, but they'll be different relative to electromagnetism. So I've got to use relativity all the time to stop myself getting into a mess. This is very, very simple. Two hands. Now we, we know that we've got six dimensions relative to the middle of something. I've got dimensions that go left and right, top and bottom, front and back. So this is what you do with the children. One, not a number, it's a unit, what you're dealing with. Two and three are the first numbers. Now, you've got two hands, so you can see that relative to each other, I've got plus one, minus one. You also have digits. But relative to each other, this is very important about the human hand. I've got two, two, and then three. Now that means I can make tools. We can make tools better than any other animal just because we can, we've got that combination. Two and three, the next digit, hand. Now a long time ago, uh, the first animals that came out of the water, a lot of them had eight fingers. But evolution is just the selection of the best fit. If you don't need eight, you don't get eight. So five is the right number. And it's not a coincidence that that plays out into the Fibonacci sequence, and the arrangement of piano keys. So now you can see how easy it is for children to pick this up and use it. It's all, mathematics is not just in a classroom by itself. It's everything out there. So we look at pictures like that of a hand with the two and three. And then we look at the number six everywhere. And there's all that nonsense which has gone in the past, six, 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 the number of the beast and all that. There was a very important reason for that. There's nothing to do with the nonsense which comes afterwards. It's just the number of water, honeybees, and snowflakes. And that's how you've got to do mathematics, related to everything that we see. So when I get uh, an electron sitting by itself, one, it's not a particle. It's relative to what's underneath it, what's causing it. So I get all these beautiful geometries and get uncertainty. When I bring two of those together, two wave functions together, I get two particles relative to each other. And we now are saying that electrical fields, magnetic fields are distortions of space-time so that relative to the two-slit experiment, molecules will pass through, distorting space and giving interference, but when they have a relationship with whatever's detecting them, which must be made of atoms, that relative rela relationship, then it's just, you can see how it's working, it's, it disappears, you can't sustain it, because relative to other particles, particles behave as particles. So you can see, if I just put use diagrams like this. Relative to zero, as long as I put numbers as plus and minus here, they equal, they equal, equal. Equal means it's the same thing. Now with whole numbers, numbers two and three which are going to make everything, the snowflake's the perfect example because two times three is six and you find that you almost get that stability, that certainty in the big pattern, but 
the details? Well, the details are decimals. That's what decimals are. And there's an infinite number of decimals between the numbers 2 and 3. So you can show children pictures like that. The pattern is always the same. The decimals, or the details are what we get. Is the differences in a universe It's the details which are different. So I need lots more certainty than uncertainty. And that shows up again in the prime numbers. I need less and less prime numbers as numbers get bigger and bigger because I've already got enough to make the other numbers. So this really just makes it graspable for the children. It's just so easy for them to learn. And we teach it here at Wager School in Taichung. Children have no problem with this. If you're looking at something like, like DNA, you just separate into two. Imagine these were magnets. I did that to a bowl of magnets, it would duplicate itself. They can all understand that. And it's that separation into two. You separate into two, and there must be opposites. So if I separate magnets into north and south, and put them into other magnets, like it all duplicates itself. Now this has been seen before. The ancient people were just as intelligent as us. And intelligence just means you can um, give a unique response to a unique situation. If I look at this, what I see is exactly the same as what we've said here. And it's that relationship between numbers, two and three, one and zero, which I'm seeing here, two opposites, which have a head and a tail and a three-dimensional, giving something which is greater than some of the parts, the two relativities, general and special, which give the mathematical relativity. Outside, I've got all the different ways that I can arrange the opposites of one, two, and three. So this is really in memory of Schrodinger's cat. And it's just unfortunate that Schrodinger used the example of a cat that was alive or dead. There's three different opposites. Opposites which are similar, electromagnetism, opposites which are dissimilar, head and tail, or the strong and weak nuclear force, doesn't matter what you look at. And then there are opposites where one is the absence of the other. Well, the cat can be relative to the Earth, it's a classical object, but inside it's a, a mathematical relativity, quantum systems, all cells. Now, that is on the number line of complexity, it goes one way it builds up, and when it dies, it goes back in the other way. So it can't go two directions at the same time. So it solves that problem. The cat can be uh, relative to two different evolutions of its life at the same time. It's not a problem anymore. You just have to look at it in the right way. So this is how we do relativity with the children. If I've got something that's turning around like this, if I've just got two, the king and the pig, when they turn around there, they're looking at each other, and it's just like the Earth and the Moon. They can't decide if they're moving. Nothing changes, there's no events, but they can feel a strange force. But if I turn the pig this way, now the, the king's looking at the pig. He says, nothing's happening, there's no events. But the pig says, no, no, I've been on a journey. And there was lots of events. We've both got a different story. If I put them both like this, now imagine two people sitting in the car, one's on the outside, one's on the inside. If he looks at the middle, he sees the pole, but this person looking out the other window, well now he's gone on a, a long journey and they both get out of the car, and one's been on a longer journey than, than the other in the same car. One says nothing happened, the other says, well, lots of things happened. And children can understand that. It's just relativity everywhere. So, if you start teaching like that, it's, you're just bringing everything together. We stop all this nonsense of just teaching science as separate subjects and mathematics is over here, art and human behavior, that's over here. It's all the same thing. One universe, one simple principle, one set of mathematics. That's how it works. See you next time. Bye.